begin our worship service now. We begin with our first hymn, hymn number 904. Please rise. Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. And he the iniquity of our sin. Almighty God, our Maker and Redeemer, we poor sinners confess unto you that we are by nature sinful and unclean, and that we have sinned against you by thought, word, and deed. Wherefore, we flee for refuge to your infinite mercy, 
seeking and imploring your grace for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ. O most merciful God, who has given your only begotten Son to die for us, have mercy upon us, and for his sake grant us remission of all our sins, and by your Holy Spirit increase in us true knowledge of you and of your will and true obedience to your word to the end that by your grace we may come to everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, has had mercy upon us and has given his only Son to die for us and for his sake forgives us all our sins. To those who believe on his name, he gives power to become the children of God and has promised them his Holy Spirit. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. Grant this, Lord, unto us all. Amen. We read the intro, it's found on page three of our worship folder. The Lord is the strength of his people. He is the saving refuge of his anointed. To you, Lord, I call upon my God. Let Hear the voice of my pleas for mercy. When I cry to you for help, when I lift up my hands toward your most holy sanctuary. Blessed be the Lord, for he has heard the voice of my pleas for mercy. The Lord is the strength, is my strength and my shield. In him my heart trusts, and I am helped. My heart exults, and with my song I give thanks to him. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord is the strength of his people. He is the saving refuge of his anointed.
together the collect of the day on page four of our worship folder. Let us pray. O Lord, let your merciful ears be open to the prayers of your humble servants, and grant that what they ask may be in accord with your gracious will. Through Jesus Christ, our Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Testament reading is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 35. Say to those who have an anxious heart, Be strong, fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance, with the recompense of God. He will come and save you. The eyes of the blind shall be opened, and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then shall the lame man leap like a deer, and the tongue of the mute sing for joy. For water breaks forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. The burning sand shall become a pool, and the thirsty ground springs of water. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from James chapter 2. My brothers, Show no partiality as you hold the faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory. For if a man wearing a gold ring and fine clothing comes into your assembly, and a poor man in shabby clothing also comes in, and if you pay attention to the one who wears fine clothing and says, You sit here in a good place, while you say to the poor man, You stand over there, or sit down at my feet. Have you not then made distinctions among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? Listen, my beloved brothers, has not God chosen those who are poor in the world to be rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom, which he has promised to those who love him? But well, you have dishonored the poor man. Are not the rich ones who oppress you and the ones who drag you into court? Are they not the ones who blaspheme and the honorable name by which you are called? If you really fulfill the royal law according to scripture, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. You are doing well. But if you show partiality, you are committing sin and are convicted by the law as transgressors. For whoever keeps the whole law but fails in one point has become accountable for all of it. What good is it, my brothers, if someone says that he has faith, but he does not have works? Can that faith save him? Where if a brother or sister is poorly clothed, lacking in daily food, and one of you says to him, go in peace, be warm and filled, without giving them the things they need for their body, what good is that? So also faith itself, if it does not have works, is dead. But someone will say, you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith apart from your works, and I will show you my faith by my works. This is the word of the Lord. Jesus, Jesus. Please rise to the reading of the Holy Gospel. <laughs> St. Mark, the seventh chapter. Mark writes, Then Jesus returned from the region of Tyre and went through Sidon and uh, to the Sea of Galilee in the region of the Decapolis. 
And they brought to him a man who was deaf and had a speech impediment. And they begged him to lay his hand on him. And taking him aside from the crowd privately, he put his fingers into his ears, and after spitting, touched his tongue. And looking up to heaven, he sighed and said to him, Ephatha, that is, be opened. And his ears were opened, his tongue was released, and he spoke plainly. And Jesus charged them to tell no one. But the more he charged them, the more zealously they proclaimed it. And they were astonished beyond measure, saying, He has done all things well. He even makes the deaf hear and the mute speak. This is the Gospel of the Lord. We confess our Christian faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed on page 192. We confess. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. We sing hymn number 797.
we certainly say, what does this all mean as I stand before my Lord? Even a famous sermon going back hundreds of years in America, sinners in the hands of an angry God. There's anxiety for you. Where do we stand? What do we do? I do not want to diminish anyone of us who may be struggling with almost a mental illness or a diagnosis of anxiety, who may be trying to manage this medically or with counseling. I do not want to diminish that at all. As a matter of fact, we might just not avoid it and let it be known. This is real. Some of us, some of everyone around us is struggling with how do I make sense of life? How do I find stability in life? How does my, even my mind and my body feel some more calmness? So God speaks. Say to those with an anxious heart, be strong and fear not, he's saying. And it's not just saying, oh, cheer up. Right? He's not just saying, why don't you just pray your sadness away? He's not just saying that. He's getting ready to make a promise. Because Israel, in Isaiah chapter 35, needs to hear this promise. Say to those with an anxious heart. You might even look at Isaiah himself. If, if you know or remember, Isaiah's call into service is recorded in chapter 6 of Isaiah. There, he is taken into the throne room of God himself. He can see the throne of God. He can see the whole, he can see God and angels flying around this room. And he says, woe to me, right? I am going to be destroyed because I am a sinful person living among a sinful people. And I've just been brought into God's courtroom, right? Into God's throne room. What's going to happen to me? And then an angel takes a burning coal off of the altar of God and starts chasing him with this burning coal. I'm coming for you. And actually that burning coal for him is to be a source of atonement. To say that God has now taken away your uncleanness and your sin. But when you see an angel chasing you with a burning coal in his hand, what might you think, right? More anxiety, level nine, right? But God comes to hear, to us here with this promise. God comes to Israel with this promise. Say to those who with an anxious heart, behold, your God will come. The time after David and Solomon, the time of the kings and the prophets, is one of the worst times in Israel. Those hundreds of years where you have bad king after a bad king after a bad king. You have a divided nation. You have people being led away from the one true God into these false gods, these false idols, looking for any place for security and promise, looking for a God that will be there for them, chasing the wrong gods. So here God comes and says to them, I will come. I will come. Now, he says, I will come with vengeance and with the recompense of God. I've looked and I can't decide. Now, vengeance, I understand. If God says, I'm coming with vengeance, you're either scared or comforted. He's coming after me or he's coming after God's enemies. Now, who am I? Am I the enemy of God? But here's what I can't decide. Is this recompense? Your know, recompense means to recompensate. Is he coming with vengeance and I'm going to pay you back for the evil you've done? Or is this trying to say, I'm coming with vengeance and I will pay back my, my people for their suffering and for their struggles. I will bring them recompense. And I can't find a source that has made that clear to me. But in either way, the promise continues. Your God will come. He will come with the recompense, or with vengeance and recompense. He will come and save you. See, the promise has brought now all the way to saying you and your salvation are sure in the promises of God. We certainly have reasons to live with anxiety in our lives. We certainly have these struggles. And when we 
live by anxiety. When we live with an anxious heart, how do we live? We feel all sorts of feelings. We feel alone when we live in our anxiety. We feel weak and vulnerable and powerless, and maybe that shows itself in fearfulness, or maybe it shows itself in anger and in attacking someone before they can attack us. If we live by anxiety, we may be saying or thinking things that are not helpful, looking for solutions in the wrong things, not thinking clearly. If you've ever had one of those moments where the anxiety was smart, was higher than a rational brain, you know you were not thinking clearly. The decisions were made that later on make no sense. We might find ourselves speaking in anger or in a verbal attack against someone, and it's because we ourselves do not feel calm or peaceful in our heart. We act rashly, rashly. Or we may say, with all of this anxiety, I can obviously see that God doesn't care or there is no God. And we begin to take on some apathetic attitude, even towards those who uh, we thought we could trust, in, even towards our God. We may just give up. So God comes again and says, speak to those. You have something to say to those with an anxious heart. Behold, your God will come. And he will come first to handle those who are the enemies of God and his people. And he will come and save you. Your God will come. And we have this promise now we know our God has come in Jesus Christ. We know, we see this, and we even have a little advent picture on the front of our bulletin here. Your God will come to save you. We have a star, and we have wise men coming on their camels. Your God will come. This Jesus has come for <coughs> salvation. This Jesus has come with the vengeance of God to take care of sin and death and the devil. He has won by dying and by rising again. Our sins have been attacked, have been won, a uh, Jesus has won a victorious victory over our sins, over the power of the devil, over death itself, we see in the resurrection. We have a God who has shown up with feet Boots on the ground, I guess they would say, right? He has come into our lives and has brought forth vengeance upon sin, death, and the devil. Has brought recompense for us, for our suffering. Has brought to you salvation. The promise of forgiveness. Your God has come. And yet we still live with this promise and he will come again. When he came the first time, we got to see what is described in verses 5 and 6 here. The blind would see, the deaf will hear, the lame will leap, <laughs> leap, and the mute will speak. And not only speak, but sing for joy. These became the signs that they were looking for. We'll know the Messiah when he does these things. And what do we see the work of Jesus throughout all the Gospels? Blind people are seeing again. Deaf people are hearing again. Lame people are leaping. I can't think the last time I left. <laughs> and the mute are not always saying, hey, I can speak again. They are singing for joy because God has come. He has come into their lives. We might be saying, I could use a little bit of that seeing, hearing, leaping, and singing in my life. The promise still remains for us. Your God will come back. Jesus will come again. And all of this will be fully and finally answered in our lives again. What happens when we live by anxiety? We look everywhere and find no answer. What happens when we live by these promises of God? We look to Jesus Christ and we stop looking. Because there in the life of Jesus, in the death of Jesus, and in the living again resurrection of Jesus Christ, we see our God keeping his promises. We hold to those promises given to us by Jesus. 
And when we live by those promises of God, maybe it begins to look a little bit like James chapter 2. Our faith moves us into action. Our faith allows us to do good works. Is this a thing saying there's something besides faith that saves? No. James chapter 2 is saying faith will bring you works. Faith without works is a dead faith. It's not really trusting. It's not really being moved by those promises. But when we live by these promises of God, we have something else. We don't have to keep looking inward saying, I'm scared, I'm nervous, I'm well, something else. But living and hearing the promises of God, we hold on to that thing as our anchor and as our hope. We may still deal with our anxiety every day. And any one of us and every one of us, no matter what happened out there, in here or in here, we may still live by those anxieties. But we will still hold promises of Jesus Christ. Amen. And now may the peace of God which passes all understanding keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. We rise and sing the offertory which is on page 192. Praise be God.
to proclaim with zeal how your Son has done all things well. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, you have commanded your church to take the word of life to the ends of the earth. Strengthen and support all who travel to foreign lands on behalf of the church's mission. Give them wisdom and courage as they tell others about Christ. Bless their hearers with hearts that are receptive to your gifts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, help parents to raise up their children to know you as their help and hope, that they may not put their trust in princes in whom there is no salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we place our hope in you and ask your blessing upon all our rulers, that their plans would be ordered for the welfare of those they govern, and that you would execute your justice for the oppressed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, graciously behold the sick and those in any need, especially today we pray for Donna. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, give us a humble and urgent faith that would beg even for crumbs from your son's table, that as your children we may receive the fullness of the feast that he gives us in his body and blood. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, source of all life and the life that never ends, receive our prayers this day in the name of your beloved Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Even as God's peace is with us today, we share the same peace of the Lord with one another. God's peace to you as well. We continue our service with the preface. On page 194. <laughs> the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Unto the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opens to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Give us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
just as the body of Christ given for you.
and sing the offertory on page unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Please be seated. We sing hymn number 842.
welcome to welcome to Christ the King Lutheran Church and welcome to our guests and visitors that are here with us today. I, I have to say I got a new prescription of lenses, so uh, most of you are looking a lot better. <laughs> anyway, just a, enough with the cheesy jokes. Um, just to take a look at the announcements uh, quickly to see uh, what's uh, especially of note there. Again, uh, we are going to continue to highlight our Sunday school uh, effort that we're beginning. Uh, it, will, uh, it, will, it will begin on September 29th, and uh, looking forward to that. If there's anybody that we should in uh, that you would like to have invited to that. Uh, we can send out uh, an email, uh, a phone call, or whatever, as we're trying to reach out to everybody, let them know that they are welcome to come. Uh, Lisa, am I right? You've got a little sheet back there? A yellow sheet. If, if you uh, are hoping that someone can be invited, there's a yellow sheet back there uh, for that as well. Uh, Lisa's also uh, taking pictures once again for uh, the, the pictorial directory. If there's anybody like the Yokums that uh, need to get their picture taken, uh, the Talbots, I guess, too. Uh, 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 so uh, you just talk to her about that as well. Just easy pictures, nothing serious, nothing doesn't have to be too formal, uh, anything like that. Um, along with our Sunday school, uh, now Mike and I have been trying to have a uh, a quarterly encouragement to be in God's Word. Now, Sunday school and Bible class are a great way that we can be in God's Word together, but uh, Mike wanted to say some more because uh, we orchestrated this. Get the Bibles on the back table. Got a few free uh, Bibles back there. They may be gently used. In case you don't have a Bible, there's Bibles on the back table that's been generated. And uh, what we want to encourage also is when you're reading the Bible, what one of the things, the side effects it has is it motivates you to pray. Because you realize when you're reading the scriptures that we're in big trouble. Uh, but God's people are called to pray in everything. With uh, um, not, not to be anxious about anything as the sermon was on, but with prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, make your, make your requests be made known unto God in the peace of God that passes all understanding will fill your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. So we also, if you say, if you say I'm not a good prayer, I don't know how to pray. There's a Lutheran book of prayer, which you can get on Amazon or from uh, the Lutheran sources, the mm -hmm. resources. Uh, it's not very expensive, and it's a great book of prayer because if you don't know how to pray, it has each day a morning and evening prayer you can pray. And you'll see that you'll become more confident and less anxious, especially when it motivates you to read the last two chapters of Revelation. We win. God wins. We're on God's side. You don't have to worry about things, how they turn out, because God in the end will bring the new heavens and the new earth in which righteousness dwells. So this is a great resource. If you don't, if you need something to help you pray, this is one of the best books that has some of Luther's prayers in it also, and we highly recommend it. All right, thank you, Mike. I moved the camera so all you lovely people at home could see Mike. Now you have to look at me again. Yeah. Um, oh. uh, um, are th is there anything else uh, of note, anything I should uh, highlight at this time? Just a yes. question. Yes. When did we rename the Nuns the Offering? Did he, went back, he went back to the <laughs> Okay. I make mistakes. Oh, so oh, I was informed that I, last week I forgot the whole sharing of the piece. Yes, you did. Yes. <laughs> All right. Uh, performance review coming up soon, I guess, right? Um, well, so, let me get back on track here. Sorry. That's all right. That's all right. Um, I also want to highlight church council meets tomorrow night. Uh, the BLT class meets after church here at, at 11.30. We are looking forward to coming up to the end of that class. And uh, it's been a lot of fun for me. I hope it's been good and, and beneficial for everybody in the BLT class. Uh, are there any other comments or questions? Except Angela. <laughs> All right. God's blessings on your day and your week. That was good. That was good. I'm sorry. I thought that too.